good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our town hall meeting. We're glad to see you here. Um, we've been working real hard for the last several months, and we're excited about what we have to present to you this afternoon. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to start our meeting in prayer. And I'll ask Father Jeff if you'll lead us in prayer. Will you will, uh, pray the prayer we pray on Sunday in the back of the uh, hymnals? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord God, you said, Unless the Lord build the house, and many will the builders of it, I ask you to look the kindness of our marriage, and send your Holy Spirit. Again, welcome, and um, this, I believe, is our fourth town hall meeting, if my memory serves me correctly, and this is a milestone day. Um, we have completed what we call our master plan for the future of St. John the Baptist Parish, and as I said, we're very excited to present it to you this afternoon. So um, you can do the, okay, all right, thank you. So, here, so here's our agenda this afternoon. I'm not going to read it to you, but I'll give you just a minute. You can uh, look at yourself. Go ahead, Kevin. So first of all, as we look to the future, we want to start by remembering our past. St. John the Baptist Parish, if my math is correct, is 163 years old. We've done this before. The, the, the worship center, the church we were in this afternoon is the third church in our parish's history. Um, and you can see the very modest beginnings in 1851. And then 25 years later, the first, I guess what I would call real church, not that that little modest one wasn't, uh, but the one that looks like a church was built in 1876, and I think that was right at the corner of Harrison and Hill Street. Okay, some of the Harrison natives are right, right here. Okay. Right, right, right where, where the school building is, right. Um, what I want to point out, the building, the 1851 church was, they tell me, was on South Elm Street. And that's significant because that means we've moved locations before. We're talking now about going to Carolina Trace, but we haven't always been here. We've been somewhere else, we've moved, so we're not even setting a precedent in doing that. Um, our, our forefathers and foremothers many years ago made that same decision. And of course, in 1922, uh, the church that we're in today was built, and that served us for over 90 years. So um, again, our forefathers and foremothers did a wonderful job in planning the future at that time and providing this wonderful facility that has served us so well. So as we began to work on the master plan, Father Jeff, who has guided us through this process, uh, instructed our committee that there are four, four principal peers or, or four principal pillars that a Catholic parish is, is responsible for in the community that it serves. It's responsible for the prayer life of the parish, uh, the formation, the Catholic formation, service, and outreach. And some of the key aspects of, of each of those are delineated underneath. But that's important for all of you to know because as we began to work on the master plan, these were the pillars that we had in mind and that we had in front of us and guided us through that process. Um, Again, here are the members, the names of the future home committee. I think many of you have seen them and, and met them before, but I have to take a moment here to thank all of my fellow committee members. Um, particularly since the first of the year, uh, we've met at least every other week on Saturday mornings. Most of the, most of the meetings went from eight to noon. Uh, we've had some other meetings and, um, and lots of time where people have been doing individual things to su support the work of this process. So I can't say enough for all my fellow committee members and how hard they've worked 
and thank you very much. So again, as we embarked upon the master plan process, these were the principal objectives that we utilized. And I think we presented these to you in the April meeting, but just for those who weren't there then, or for purposes of review, it was to define the project scope, understand the parish needs and goals. In regard to that, we did extensive interviews with um, individuals, uh, employees, uh, administrative staff, school staff, volunteers, um, folks that headed up athletics, that headed up the music ministry, um, I, I, just uh, a whole array of individuals were interviewed to assess their needs and for the particular ministries that they led um, to, to assess what was important to them as we built the process. So that was a very, very important step and a lot of you participated in that. And so again, thanks to all of you who assisted us in that regard. Once that information was all compiled, we started to develop the building pr program and we started looking at different planning options. And the folks from Entheos, um, Kevin Stuckwish, who, who is here today, then took all that information and started to present options to us as a committee that we then discussed um, provided input to, went back and forth, and, and continued to revise those. And, um, and once that was all assembled, we broke it down into some phasing processes because this master plan, I think you all understand, that we're, gonna, that we're about to present, this isn't something we're going to do uh, in totality in the next couple of years, uh, unless somebody steps forward with a $20 million donation, um, and then we will. But uh, assuming that that won't happen, it, this is going to be a, a plan that's going to serve us for probably 20 years or better as we try to uh, ultimately move our parish facilities from this campus to the campus on Carolina Trace Road. And that brings us to um, what, what the last bullet point, which was presentation of the master plan, and that's where we are here this afternoon to present it to all of you. Again, just for point of review, some of the key design goals that we kept in mind as we did our work. First and foremost, we need to increase the facility capacity. That's what, that's what brought us it, uh, to this project in the first place. We want a building that is fully accessible um, for all, all people. Um, it's not, uh, we all know that there are many limitations in this building to assist uh, elderly and or that make it more difficult for elderly and disabled to fully access all of our facilities and functions. So uh, the new building will be fully accessible. We wanted to separate school and parish functions. Um, one of the big reasons, it removes conflicts of security for the school and parish functions, we wanted to maintain an overall sense and feel of parish cohesiveness in the overall campus plan. And so those are somewhat differing goals, um, but we work to incorporate them into a, a very cohesive process. Certainly maintain and promote the Catholic identity, um, the Catholic identity here in the Harrison community. Um, we wanted to separate pedestrian and vehicular flow on the process for, again, for safety and security and just for efficiency. Uh, and then finally, consider the ramifications of, of a basement, both budgetary and functional. So again, those are the key design goals as we embarked upon the work. Um, and so, before I turn the microphone over to Kevin to actually present the um, master plan to you, just um, a, a point of, of reference again today, our new site location is located on the right side on Carolina Trace, and of course on the left side outlined is where we sit today, our current campus facility. Um, you can see that I-74 sort of dissects it, but um, it's really just directly east, but the new, the new facility in land space is about six times as large as what we have here. So I think with that overview, I'm gonna turn this over to Mr. Kevin Stuckwish from Entheos, the, the architects 
that have uh, led us and guided us through this process. And, and, and Kevin's going to actually present the master plan to you. So, Kevin? We got Can everybody hear me? Is this on? Okay. Yes. I might need my pointer back. <laughs> well, um, thanks, Tom, and thank you all for allowing me back. Um, I was here a couple, two, three months ago, and we talked then about um, some of the things that Tom covered about what you wanted to do, what we, you know, saw from a functional point of view that would be a part of your new facility. So. Today we've taken all of that and we've, um, I'll say, organized it into a master plan. Again, the things you're going to see, we do have um, images that look like a building, but we haven't designed the building. Okay, so um, think of it as a master plan is really more of an organizational um, kind of guidepost for future development. But as we move forward into various phases, we would, uh, you know, Look at that uh, the uh, entire facility, you know, as a as a design piece. So each piece, as we move forward, still has a lot of design work to be done with it. So um, Tom kind of covered where we're at on the new site. So we'll jump right in. Um, so this is the master plan for the entire site as we see it. Um, and just so get your bearings, I'll use this: the New Haven Road. Across the top, Carolina Trace along the side over here. So I think one of the things that uh, became pretty apparent as we talked through various options with the committee, and we looked at uh, three, four, five options of: is it all one building? Is it separate buildings? Is it um, you know how does parking work? Which way does it face? And ultimately, uh, things started coming towards the top of uh, where we should head with this. So. One of the main things was as you entered the site, the importance of seeing the church and the entry and availability of parking. So um, we really have the main entrance coming in off of Carolina Trace. There is the potential of a secondary access off the New Haven Road at some point in the future, and we'll see how that works as we show you phase one uh, versus the remainder of the master plan. Um, we also know that you all have the uh, potential of purchasing one of the houses along uh, Carolina Trace, which we really feel you need to uh, create a proper entrance into the site. So we're showing uh, that one house being demolished and your entry drive coming in off of uh, Carolina Trace into then a large parking area that is really split into two, two separate areas on each side. There's a, Again, this will make more sense when we see some 3D images, but kind of a, I'll call it a main pedestrian kind of central way that leads directly up to the church and the building and an entry plaza. Um, about half the parking to this side, another half to this side, and really organizationally, we have the church right in the center of the site with gathering coming off of there, offices, the parish hall, and um, meeting rooms. To this side, again, I'll, you'll see that a, a little bit closer in the floor plan views. Um, but then to the opposite side, the school has a separate building. And again, some of those ideas of security uh, for the school children on a daily basis and separation of your parish uh, functions, funeral dinners, whatever it might be, versus school uh, activities that are happening on a daily basis. So um, as we look at this, so this side, primarily would serve, I'll say, the daily parish needs, with the parish um, hall, the offices, the church over here. This side would primarily serve school needs on a daily basis. So as you come in, this would be the primary drop-off point right here for parents dropping off kids, um, coming around, moving back out. There is another connection along the side, probably more staff parking along the edge of the school, and then you can see these roads connect around the building and back out to the opposite side, which this would then be primarily on a morning basis for bus drop-off. Trying to separate the parent drop-off from the buses, public school buses that are coming into the site. Um, in general, school administration uh, is located up here close to the church, um, close proximity at the front of the site. 
um, classrooms, and then your gymnasium, cafeteria functions at the uh, back of the building. Leaves a, uh, a pretty open area back, uh, I'll say behind the buildings, for things like parish festival, um, other activities, and then as well leading into sports fields uh, towards the far end of the site. Um, one of the other things just to notice here, we do have a place for a, um, I'll say a maintenance building, which we talked a lot about that as serving both for storage, um, outdoor storage, and for maintenance, uh, but also for your parish festival uh, storage of that and possibly even the kitchen during that time that the, the, the uh, food could be prepared here and it is still close to the cafeteria, um, but then again that area probably is primarily uh, your area for parish festival. So as we look a little bit closer to each of those buildings, so this is the, the uh, church building, parish, parish building, parish offices. Again, you can see that's that entry plaza coming from the parking areas up here into large gathering space. You will see the, the uh, a bell tower on the corner um, flowing directly into a worship space for 1,200, 1200 seats. Um, to each side, there's restrooms, vestry, um, your other support spaces for worship, uh, music, storage, uh, sacristy uh, behind the, the sanctuary. A chapel, a daily mass chapel to one end, a hospitality room uh, for funerals, for uh, families during that time, other kind of smaller events like that. And then connecting into uh, the parish offices, here, nursery space, and then into, I'll say, meeting room, a meeting room kind of wing here, large and small meeting rooms with the parish hall on the corner. So this allows, on a daily basis, that this could be used as your main daily entrance for folks coming to the parish offices, um, plus could allow events to happen in the parish hall, again, away from what's happening maybe in the school. Um, at the far end of the building, we have the youth room, um, towards the back side of this. And that's uh, primarily due to their need for um, access to the site. They might use uh, athletic facilities there, um, those types of events. Um, there is, again, yeah, not very easy to see, you'll see again in the, in the 3D images, but a drop-off canopy that serves primarily the, the church here coming around into the gathering space from the side, um, but could potentially serve the school as well if it were connected with an open Kind of canopy piece. The uh, school, again, sitting south of that, here is the, the church piece and the, and the drop off canopy I just mentioned. But the main school entry, drop off for parents right here, um, school administration, and then the classroom, the lower grades, pre K, first, uh, kindergarten, second, and third, we would envision on the main floor. Um, this area in the center would be a two story building. So primarily the classrooms would be in a two-story wing. Um, maybe some of your specialty classrooms, music, art, back here with an entry from the far side of the site, back side of the site. Your main competition gym with then the potential of an auxiliary, um, I'll call it an auxiliary gym or a multi-purpose room that might also have access to a uh, stage. So that's kind of probably way down the road, but the idea of Potential for two gymnasiums, one more athletic geared, one more uh, multi-purpose geared. Kitchen, cafeteria, across the way here, and again, building support storage um, mechanical areas at the far end. So. The second floor of that building, which is primarily this area in the center, again, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. So again, the school is now a, a full two-section school, two grades or two classrooms per grade. Um, and then the media center up on that second level. Um, the areas back here is, is primarily roof and just your upper part of your gymnasium is such a, a tall space. So if we start to look at what that might all begin to look like. Um, again, coming in from 
This is Carolina Trace coming into the, into the site. You can see this pedestrian way. And really these kind of two other diagonal um, paths across the parking. And that's really to kind of slow traffic, um, allow folks, if you're parking out here, to kind of follow. Again, it goes across the drives, but it allows a, a visual kind of way, path of coming back to that center and the main entry of the church here. See the bell tower in the corner, drop off potential here next to this. Again, like I mentioned, parents looping around to drop off kids, pick up kids here. Parish hall to this side with the offices in between. Um, again, the school going back to the gymnasium uh, and then athletic fields beyond. Again, this might be what we see as you drive into the site. Again, that importance of seeing the church, the, tower, the bell tower, um, and knowing where to go on the site when you come in. Um, again, off to the side, the school entrance to this, to this site. Parish Hall over here. Potentially could have uh, a fountain or a statue of St. John Baptist out at the entry as we come in. Um, again, looking a little bit over from uh, this, uh, I guess it'd be south side of the site, the school here, running back along the edge of the site. Again, the church drop off right here. Um, from the rear of the site, so these are all the athletic fields. And again, you'll notice there's, there's a number of, of athletic fields shown on the site, but still not all that you uh, have asked for or wanted, or some folks have wanted. Um, but there's a, there is some overlap of, you know, softball, baseball, baseball with soccer field or football. Um, we tried to get as many on there as we could. Um, we think they could be workable. But again, the idea of coming into that rear uh, part of the site, place for bus drop off that they can easily loop in and get back out. We would probably and really anticipate that this kind of area right here would be closed off with a gate maybe there and there during the day, which would allow kids to have a hard surface play area as well as grassy, access to grassy area for play during school. Um, again, playground located up in here. This uh, is potentially a, um, I'll say a shelter house. You might have, youth might have some things out there where they're cooking out um, or parents may have some things. Um, again, the idea back here at the sports field, the concession area, as well as that uh, maintenance building that I mentioned. Um, and then the idea of this kind of area right between the church, parish hall, meeting rooms, that there's some, uh, there's the ability to maybe develop a uh, type of a prayer garden within that space. It's a little bit secluded um, just outside the church. Um, but again, I think when we looked at two buildings, the idea of you know, your majority of your parking being up here, a way of accessing that that you could actually flow between the two buildings to the back part of the site, I think is important to, the, to them as well. Um, again, looking, same kind of view back from really on the ground. So you see the shelter house, back of the church, youth and the meeting room space over here, the school, uh, the gymnasium entrance off to the left there. Kind of, same kind of view there of the school primarily. So as we start to think about where you start on this, this is a big project, so you've got to start somewhere. Um, we've heard that worship the church is really a phase one, as we've heard all along. So the, uh, this is what we would envision being a phase one at this point. Again, you can see the idea of coming off Carolina Trace. Um, a large amount of that parking primarily developed at the uh, one end of the site. And then essentially your worship space to a certain degree. Now one of the things we heard was we want to build a church. We don't want to build a parish hall and worship in it. We want to build the church we're going to event, you know, be worshiping in for the next hundred years, whatever it might be. So that's how we looked at this. You can see again this area this square is primarily a phase one, but you see all the other parts of this. So this is that eventual parish hall, offices, and eventually the gathering space for the church, the bell tower, 
um, hospitality room chapel. So we're really building kind of the, the worship, the eventual full worship space, but using it for other purposes in phase one. Because in phase one, we're really only building for 800 seats, which is twice the size of this, I think. a little more than twice of what you have right here. So again, a pretty large worship space initially. Um, so this area that is labeled as gathering, maybe it helps a little bit, um, that is eventually all part of your worship space. So seats are extended back into here, um, these storage rooms, sacristies, again a lot of this is filled in, kitchen space to serve this gathering space, a meeting room, a couple offices, sacristy, vestry space, again not any storage rooms built per se to the far side of the worship space but again seating for 800 and this is your final sanctuary your final interior of your worship space so that's not going to change other than in the back um, again you can see that future gathering out here this is really the walls of this full out kind of worship space um, we are extending in a phase one some parking up closer to the building again because of space here for future buildings the church is set a little ways off of the main parking area so um, the idea of uh, bringing that drop off um, drive some additional parking up towards the front um, just to get closer to the, to the building um, we think this um, overall, adds a lot of flexibility in what you can do, um, and we'll see that a little bit when we add things uh, to this. But as of phase one, then again, that main, you know, this is from the parking area up one of these kind of collector paths to primarily that center church piece. Okay, so that's kind of, again, keeping development, really only developing half the site in this phase one. So again, saving, trying to save some money here where this, the back half of the site probably would remain farm fields, what it is now. Um, but really developing this entrance off of Carolina Trace coming in and the front part of the building. So as then um, you would proceed, so this is phase one. There's a lot of flexibility in what you could add. We've kind of picked an order, but you might say at some point we add the parish hall, the offices, maybe that's your first phase, I don't know. Um, at some point, you'll see here the church, that gather, that future gathering space, the bell tower, the drop off coming in. Um, the school and the development around the school really probably is not uh, a phase project. The school will probably have to be taken as one huge project because of the number of kids you already have. And then athletic fields in the back. Again, not particularly in any order, um, but it allows you flexibility to kind of do whatever your needs dictate. You know, if you say, we're, um, you know, we need the offices or we need the parish hall, we can build that before we add onto the church. If you say, we are, we're growing at such a rate, we ought to add onto the church, we could do that. Or we ought to get the school out there on the site, whatever becomes your priority. Um, I think this kind of campus plan lends itself to adding on where you where you need it so so again the goal of all this is this serving as kind of a, a guide po post for future development so organizing the site where things are going not necessarily what they look like we hope they look like a church and they look nice but again we haven't necessarily designed these buildings so um, or the inside of them with that i'll turn it back over to tom a little bit here and then um, we've got a, a video right at the end of Tom's uh, information here which probably will help you understand a little bit better the three-dimensional aspects of it. So. All right. Probably won't make it, yeah. Th thank you Kevin. Um, that's very well very well presented. Um, so hopefully, again, you can you can start to see now and get the vision of, of what we have in mind and, and see uh, the different options uh, and possibilities we have and the flexibility in this design concept. And again, just to summarize, our needs to meet our mission and ministry, and we, we talked about some of these at the beginning, 
maintain and promote our Catholic Christian identity, um, accommodate the coming cl uh, clergy shortage. Father Shine and Father Dormer are sitting here in the, in the front row, and um, they've been very generous with their time uh, for a long time, and they're the most active retired people I think I know. And thank you, Father Dorman and Father Shine. Uh, I, I think we all, yeah. Um, but with the future, there are going to be less priests, so we need a bigger facility. Um, as we mentioned, full physical accessibility for all people, no matter what their capabilities, uh, uh, their abilities or, or limitations. Uh, we want a gathering space so that we have the ability um, to, to interact more effectively in that community role that we have. Um, and an efficient design and a layout for now, not only now but in the future um, so that when we do phase things on, it doesn't look like we just thumbtack things here and there and they don't, it's not cohesive, it doesn't make sense. We want something that's got a, a cohesive and a comprehensive flow. And so hopefully you'll agree that the, um, the plan that Kevin just outlined will enable us to fulfill that um, objective. All right, um, so that's what it looks like. Um, so it's, it's going to cost us money to do this. Uh, we all know that. Um, we were here in June of 2013 when we f had our first town hall meeting, and we, we laid out the very first, uh, at that time we talked about the options of staying at this site versus going to Carolina Trace Road, and we, we had some different architects we were w working with at the time, but uh, at that time, we had some real rough estimates of what it would cost to build a church and to build a school. Um, and you might remember, I think the total cost of the entire project was up over $30 million. But just that, that part of the church itself, the church and the site improvements and the purchasing of the land, um, was going to be over $12 million of that piece. So keep that in mind. $12 million is where we started from. And we're going to get back to that in a moment. Um, but before we get into that, I'm going to turn this over to Father Jeff, and um, um, he's going to talk about the capital campaigns and really uh, a dual capital campaign that uh, uh, we're going to embark upon. Thanks, Tom. Nothing ever goes without some kind of hitch or something else to consider, and that's certainly been the case in our process all along. I think that we have met those and figured out how to deal with those. And recently, the Archdiocese announced, so it has not made public as far as officially publishing it, that they're going to do a capital campaign for the Archdiocese. And it's called One Faith, One Hope, One Love. Someone jokingly referred to it as One Faith, One Hope, One Dollar. <laughs> this campaign begins either this late summer or fall as they're, as they're pulling things together, and they seek to raise for the Archdiocese $130 million. That leaves us spinning. But here's how it breaks down. 50% of that money, or $65 million, is going to be set aside for Catholic schools. The majority of it will go to provide uh, tuition assistance to middle-class families. Our biggest problems are not in people of low economic levels because uh, the Ohio government has provided various ways to address those in recent years. And of course, those who are wealthy can afford to pay tuition. It's people in the middle class who are stuck. And the diocese has been working on this for like um, three or four years. Uh, and sees that the greatest threat to Catholic schools is the rising cost of tuition. They looked and they said we could either give money to schools, but we don't have a school system where we say every school operates in the same way. Every Catholic parochial school and Catholic diocesan high school can run itself as it sees fit. So they thought the best way to address this is to say people apply for tuition assistance that will help them to fray the costs of, um, of, of tuition for schools. It will be for 
Catholic diocesan or parish grade schools and Catholic diocesan high schools. The schools that will not be included, and these are the only ones which will not be included of the high school, are St. X, St. Ursula Villa, and Ursuline Academy. And that's because they are run as Catholic institutions, but are owned and operated solely by the um, religious order that owns them, or in uh, some cases, uh, Ursuline and St. Ursula, the sisters no longer own them, but there's, uh, however it's set up, that they're still Catholic schools in good grace with the diocese. So much of that money would be very helpful in our parish, I think. 10% of the money, or 13 million, will go for retired priests, pension fund. That's 6.5 for Father Shine and 6.5 for Father Dorman. <laughs> You might, that might sound an extravagant amount, but our priest retirement fund has sort of been run as just part of the diocesan collections and things like that. We can't sustain that anymore. Um, and for legal reasons too, the pen pension fund will be set up separate as a separate corporation, which protects it from any way in which the diocese might be sued or money taken from that. We are only, 45% funded in the priest's retirement fund. Um, and so that's where that money will go. 12% or 16 million will go for fostering vocations, uh, work in the active work of recruiting, but also the seminary as it grows to, um, uh, it, as the number of students increase in the seminary and lay pastoral ministry program and the diaconate, they're running low on space as well. 8% or $10 million will go for Catholic charities and social services. Many of those um, programs need uh, a bolstering, but also the places where they're run from are um, often inadequate. Then, to urge parishes on, 20% of the money collected by any parish up to the goal will be returned to that parish to use as they want with no assessment. So, and if the parish makes the goal that is sent for them, 60% is returned to that parish for them to use as they want. This uh, all sounds mind boggling, which it certainly was for me when I first heard about this. I thought, my gosh, I feel like I've been hit by a semi. But as I thought about it, the diocese really must be looking forward to addressing issues. We aren't in the situation of, of 50 years ago where you could simply take up collections and make it work here and make it work there. Um, we have to look at a broader scope with that. Each parish will be given the goal of 120% of their 2013 Sunday and Holy Day collection. For us, that amount is uh, one, uh, one million, no, not one million, is it, yeah, it is one million, one million four hundred thousand dollars. Now, I don't want you all thinking, well, I was smart not to put anything in the collection, look what I'm saving the parish. <laughs> the diocese is saying to parishes, you make a good faith effort to meet that goal, and the diocese accepts whatever is raised in that parish with 20% of it going back, even if they don't make their goal, and 60% of anything over the goal coming in. Obviously, this presents a real challenge to parishes who were planning capital campaigns themselves, and the diocese realizes this. And sometimes I wish I weren't as rational as I am, because I would like just to get mad at the diocese and say, how can you do this to us now? But there's never going to be a time when no one is having a capital campaign for the diocese to do theirs. But to meet that situation, the diocese is offering two options to those parishes. Uh, oh, and by the way, the, the money that is pledged obviously comes from parishioners, and it would be payable over a five-year period with that. The, the diocese foots the bill for that capital campaign. We don't pay the people who come in and do that in, in the normal situation. 
In the situation where parishes had planned capital campaigns, the diocese is offering two options for that. One is that you do a combined campaign with the archdiocese. It would use the archdiocesan fundraisers who would work for us and we would pay them. Their main work will be for our campaign. In fact, they sort of described it this way. Obviously, all these campaigns have brochures with them. You got a four-page brochure. The last page is the diocesan campaign. The first three are your parish campaign. They aren't saying it will only be a four-page, but they gave that example. So they would be working for us in that. The diocesan, uh, let's see, and we would ask, we can ask for a reduced amount for the diocesan campaign. So any parish which is doing uh, a campaign at the same time as a dual campaign can ask to have the amount that they would um, uh, feel they can pay reduced. For us, that amount, Paul, tell me if that's right because I forgot to write it down here. We had originally gone and said we could do 200,000 and they said, well, uh, well, here's the other thing. At that time, we didn't know that any money we collect during the diocesan campaign for our church, there is no diocesan assessment of. So if we collect money to build our church, normally we would have to pay an assessment. We pay no assessment to the diocese. That tax is written off, which would roughly be around $500,000. We don't pay that. So they said, given that you aren't going to pay that, we're going to ask you to go back and look at this. So um, we worked out a figure which we resubmitted to them, but we have not got a response yet of, um, I always have to look at my numbers here, Six, 620,000 of which we would not have to pay 20% of that or we would get it back. So we're really asking for 545,600 as our, our level. That is 45,000 over what we would pay if we had to pay the assessment for building. And so, in a way, we would get off very light with that. They have not gotten back to us with that yet, so we're waiting to, um, to hear with that. But we must guarantee that we would meet that amount. The other, if you're just doing the diocesan campaign alone, you just Raise what you can and, and say, here it is. If you get a reduced amount, you must meet that goal. So that comes off the top in that. So in one sense, it's like, oh my gosh, another thing to face. In another, it's we would have been having to pay that um, assessment on the money we raised, which we aren't now. The campaign um, uh, would be run by the, um, the company, and they would do much more of the work than if we had our own company. We're gonna pay for it, but they're very good at this. This group has um, done 13 um, diocesan uh, fundraiser, uh, capital campaigns, and exceeded the goal on all of them with cash in, except for two which are in the process, but they exceeded those goals, but it's not the five years aren't up, so money's still coming in. So they said they had to be honest with that. Um, I talked to a parish which did a dual campaign and they went 500,000 over what the set amount was. And they felt that that was really amazing because they were in the Diocese of Cleveland, as you might know from the news over the past few years, they have just had to wholesale close a lot of ethnic parishes. And so he had this priest I talked to, his parish, was now from two parishes put together, and there was a lot of anger and hurt that that happened, but they still went 500,000 over their goal with that. So that's one option, that we do that. The second option is that we wait, the diocese said you either do it as a dual campaign or you wait until January 2016 to begin our own campaign. We would do the diocesan campaign now, and whatever we raise is fine. If we only raise 200,000, as long as we show good faith effort, they'll say that's it, and we get 20% back, we get 40,000 back. But if we do that, we then have to pay the assessment 
on our building because it will be outside the campaign if we wait until we're outside the campaign. We would have to pay that assessment. We would also face the possibility of increasing cost, loans, interest, and all of that that could occur during that time. The um, Future Home Committee has, from the start, strongly felt that we should do the combined campaign if a reasonable reduction is given to us. And we haven't heard back on that reduction yet, if a reasonable reduction is, is given to us. As I said, we've applied for a $620,000 pledge level, which means we would have to pay $545,600. We also feel that we've had a number of false starts for decades um, on getting a church going and that people are just now beginning to think, hey, we might really do this, where at the beginning people are like, yeah, yeah, this will never happen. Um, and we don't want to lose that steam. So that is where we are at this point. We have to hear back from the diocese. Um, and so I wanted to present that material to you at this time. Thank you, Father Jeff. Um, I know that's, that's a lot to absorb. I think Father Jeff did a great job of laying that out. Um, Kevin, if you could, there it is up there, okay. Before we get into the numbers, um, Father Jeff did mention that the Future Home Committee uh, has endorsed going ahead at this time um, given all the alternatives that were laid out there, it seems to make the most sense. Um, we've also presented this information. The Parish Pastoral Council and the, and the Parish Finance Committee are also aware of these things. And um, so there's an overall consensus that this is, is the way to move forward. So let's take a moment and run through the numbers um, to put it all in perspective for you. Um, Again, at the bottom of the page, $12,171,000. When we met in June of last year and we presented for the first time the idea of a new church facility, that was the, th those were the dollars we were talking about um, uh, to, to do a church building. Um, it became apparent that $12 million was going to be a big stretch. We needed to push that down. So the work in the last year plus has been to do that and to still come back with a plan that made a lot of sense and was going to give us something that looks like a church, feels like a church, and is something that we can uh, be proud of and, and properly worship in. So with that in mind, um, the budget for the church itself is $6.2 million or a little bit more. And the way it breaks out, um, site work is a million four because that's unimproved land out there on Carolina Trace. So um, for better or for worse, it costs us a million four just to get that land in condition to be able to start constructing on it. Uh, the building itself, and this will be the, the phase one building that Kevin just showed you. So it's the one that um, has the, uh, the um, overall framework for a 1,200 seat church, but it, it would originally have 800 seats in it and the back piece would be our gathering space. That'll be an 18,705 square foot uh, facility. Just in comparison, I think this building is a little over 4,000 square feet. Dan's nodding his head. So, so we're talking about a building that'll be more than four times the size of this building that we're in, just to um, put it in perspective for you. Um, the rough estimates is that would be about $3.2 million to construct. And then furnishings that would go inside of the church, altars, pews, candlesticks, statuary, uh, uh, st stained glass windows, um, musical instruments, all of that, about $458,000. Um, design fees for architects and engineers, $430,000. And then we have contingencies of a little over $700,000. So that all comes out to $6.2 million. As Father Jeff said, the Archdiocesan assessment is zero. So that Archdiocesan assessment, if you take 5.7% of that $6.2 million, would have been about, I think about $450,000. Um, so that's something that 
um, that the archdiocese has now waived. And I know that in, from prior meetings, the archdiocesan assessment was something that was a, a bit of a, of, of a contentious um, thing for, for some of us here. So um, we really think that that's, that that's a very positive thing. And, and I, I think that, that speaks well for the archdiocese in terms of recognizing uh, the sacrifices we're going to have to make uh, to fulfill the obligations of these dual campaigns. Um, of course, we still have $850,000 mortgage on the land, the remaining amount of, uh, from the original purchase price of that land in 2004 uh, that we have not paid off, so that still needs to be paid off. Campaign consulting fees would be about $150,000, and then um, the last number is that piece um, for the archdiocesan capital campaign, which as Father Jeff said, that's what we have presented back to them. We have not got a definitive word, so you have to put a little asterisk on that number because we don't know for certain that they'll approve that. Um, but we're, we're hopeful that they will. We've met with them a number of times. We've been meeting with them um, throughout the course of this year, so they're very well um, familiar with what we're doing. And they've also been very supportive and very complimentary of us in terms of all of the steps that we've done in terms of um, initially presenting the, uh, the, the uh, proposal of this facility versus uh, Carolina Trace, um, surveying the parishioners, um, all of the interviews that we've done, the master planning process. They've told us that we've done all those things the right way, and they've kind of encouraged us. They said many parishes don't do that. They're not, they're not nearly that uh, careful and comprehensive. So I think we have that going for us, that, that they see that we have really um, proceeded in this project in a very careful and thoughtful and comprehensive way. So, so that $12.1 million from last year is, is down to $7.7 .7 million. So it's about $4.4 .4 million less the price tag than it was where we thought we were a year ago. So. I think that's pretty encouraging because it's not often the prices go down on anything, and uh, and we've knocked the price down over 35 percent in a year's time. So it's still going to be a big challenge, but it's not nearly as big of a challenge as where we thought we were a year ago. And now we start to have a concept of what this is going to look like and, and and what a tremendous facility and campus that we can have out on Carolina Trace Road. I want to do. Jump back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, one thing I forgot to mention. Let me jump back to, to phase one. We had talked a lot um, in the committee and before about the idea of a basement, which I didn't bring up, and that was one of our to look at really what that means, ramifications of a basement, both from a, a functional point of view and a cost point of view. Um, you'll notice in our proposed phase one and in the master plan, we don't propose a basement. Um, is it my network? Um, we don't propose a basement in the phase one or necessarily in the master plan. However, we didn't want to close the door on that necessarily. Um, what we looked at was um, the difference with the committee of a, I'll say, a ground floor building where the gathering space might be slightly larger here than what's necessary just for a gathering space, but could also serve as a parish hall. Let me, if we can see those, we've kind of put some tables in there um, to kind of show that. But there's seating for about 175 or so. So that we looked at that as a difference between um, doing something like that where that's a flexible multi-use space there versus creating a basement I'll say below this entire area to serve as a parish hall. Um, that again um, probably doubled or tripled the amount of space that this option did. So again, it comes back to the numbers of phase one numbers of probably another uh, roughly seven hundred fifty thousand to a million dollars to put a basement underneath of here as a separate space versus using gathering for a multi. I'll say a multiple purpose flexible space. So, um, and then ultimately long term, um, putting a kitchen down there, putting restrooms, again, an elevator, a lot of other things go with putting that basement underneath of there. 
that the committee came back and said this as a phase one seems to be our better economical solution as well as maybe long term when you think about uh, accessibility to that space um, having a parish hall that's on the same level as grade where you can get in and out easier but not to forego the idea that maybe underneath one of any of these areas there could be a basement built for storage or for some other purposes so it is um, some space that could be available at some point down the road so i wanted to mention that since we had talked about the basement before but that's kind of where we ended up here so um so the other thing left is we have a video here let me get back to where we were uh, phase one and then um, the master plan um, and just knowing i the other thing i forgot to mention the 18,000 is a phase one the total master plan is about right at double the square footage of all your buildings here so we're roughly increasing your uh, building footprint by double if you count all the school all the buildings you have on this site so just so you know about where that's at so Schedule. You want to go back to that? Sorry, we saw something else that we didn't talk about. Uh, just to give you an idea now, the schedule, where we've been and where we're headed. So the feasibility study uh, was initiated in 2013. And um, from that, we've been doing master planning uh, uh, in, in full gear since March and through today. And so the plan at this point would be to launch a capital campaign in the fall of this year and um, maybe not coincident with that, but probably slightly behind that, we would, we would start the design phases. And um, we, we need to have an idea from the capital campaign how much we can raise before we can really get fully into the design phases, because that's going to ultimately dictate what we can do in phase one and how much we can do. Um, the documentation phase uh, is in the winter. And then uh, we could uh, get into bidding and negotiations in the early spring of next year. And if all goes well, we could break ground maybe sometime uh, uh, early to late spring of 2015. And by the spring of 2016, we could be worshiping in our new church on Carolina Trace Road. That's probably the best case scenario. Um, but, but, but you have to have targets. So those are our targets at this point in time. And uh, again, we'll, keep, we'll continue working the process in a, in a very um, uh, planned way, and, and we'll see how that goes. And as, um, as those timetables maybe adjust a little bit, we'll certainly continue to keep you apprised of that. So with that, I think, yeah, we want to show a video now that uh, maybe gives a, in a little different way uh, a feel for what this new um, facility on Carolina Trace, this, this campus will, will look like. Okay, so this will start off with phase one and then add the rest of it and go around another time. So again, you've seen some of these images before, but as we come in off of Carolina Trace, the idea of, of that uh, phase one church facility uh, with the parking. So as you look at this, uh, it looks a little lonely out there, doesn't it? <laughs> but like I said before, we've got we've to gotta start somewhere. Um, this is a, you know, a pretty long range and, and ambitious plan that will last years and years and years, and, um, but hopefully a little sooner. Yeah. I've seen cars just way there, and I've seen a lot of things just way. One thing I do not see just way is an American high school. <laughs> there, <laughs> me, that means a lot. there is one in front of the school, so hang on, and I'll, I'll point it out to you. Well, they're both about the same place. Yeah, hang on. Um, the other thing I want to point out, if you notice the windows, we are planning to reuse windows from the space, both the 
uh, the smaller ones and the larger ones. Um, you see on there. So again, as we back up in the other phases of the, the uh, master plan, kind of pop in here. As we come around to the to the back, we've kind of looked at all this, but meeting space, parish hall. Um, again, the, the windows in the church, if you saw there, these um, maybe are the larger ones. We're uh, at this point showing the smaller ones up above the sanctuary again, similar to what they are here. to the school, which again, admin, the media center was in this first block, the classrooms primarily in these two, and the gymnasium, kitchen, cafeteria. Um, the, the flagpole we're showing right now is right here at the front of the school. And again, if that's not in the right place, we can move that, but. Um, again, the front of the church, the bell tower, um, you know, similar to your existing one. Again, trying to bring some of that, you know, say, heritage or historical nature with us as we um, move forward. So, with that, then I think we're ready to take questions. Yeah. All right. I think um, with well, there's some handouts at the end for for folks to take home. But so. Um, yeah, we've spent the last hour talking to you, so now it's, it's your opportunity to, any questions or comments or observations? Yes. Well, um, it, I think Kevin mentioned we'll probably have a second way, um, and it hasn't been determined exactly where that would be. We have a couple of options on that. The question was, is there only one way in or one way out? Um, what we showed was the principal way in and principal way out, but there will, there will ultimately be a, a second ingress or egress. Uh, yes. Yeah, we. Not sure, where this is this working now? Yes. There it is. Okay. I, yeah, we um, we did take into account um, the potential purchase of the one house there to create a larger entry yes. in phase, yeah, in phase one, yeah. And, and in phase one, there would really be one access point. Um, in phase two beyond, you, you would probably have the need for a second, secondary entrance. Carol, you have a question? Question is, will the second floor of the school be handicap accessible? Yes, there's, there is an elevator as part of the school. Uh -huh. Yes? Um, the original plan here says we're going to have 1,200 seats. But in the beginning, we're going to build 800. So where in this building are the additional 400 seats coming from? That's, let me see if I can back up here to the plan. So if I look at, I don't have enough hands here. If we, if you look at this, um, the question is the 400 seats. So the other 400 seats are primarily here where the phase one gathering is, plus these corner 
there he is, okay? So keep this in mind what that looks like right now. And then I'll flip back here to that same thing in a master plan. So that has been, that storage room that was here has been taken out, the vestry, so those have been pushed back, plus these now extend into what was the gathering space right here. And a new gathering space has been built out beyond that. Okay, does that make sense? So this, so phase one is really this block right here. Stops right there is where phase one stops, and that gathering space is right there. So there's another set of doors that are going across right here in that phase one plan. Yeah, I touched on the flag, the flag pole where that is. I, I would just think, as Americans, we should have a flag pole in front of the church. I see a lot of other Catholic churches Scott, why can't we have this in America? And I would, I would say, yeah, certainly we could have a flag pole there. Um, we chose to put it in front of the school only because usually that's where they tend to go when there's a school and a church. but. At either place would be fine. Yeah. Well, we're not going to have a school in this. We'll have a flagpole where it's prominent in front of the church. Yeah. Um, again, this is this is a design concept. So um, there will certainly be a flag, and it will certainly be in a, in a place that's very appropriate. We agree with you. Okay. <laughs> we've we've got it nailed. It. Thank you. Well, again, in that phase one, that's all we're going to have out there is a church. So, you know, we'll, we'll put it in front of the church. The, the question was, will that archdiocesan capital campaign replace some of the other archdiocesan uh, collections? I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah, we, we, we don't know the answer to that. Right. That's, yeah, we, we, we're not privy to that information. <laughs> Where's the tabernacle going to be? <coughs> Specifically, we have design data. Uh, I would anticipate that it's either um, directly behind the sanctuary uh, or it's off to the side of the way. Yeah. Yeah. But keep in mind, this it has not been finally designed yet. Okay, so those are, you know, that that those final decisions will be made as we move ahead. But where is the handicap parking? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? How many feet is the handicapped parking from the door to the church? I don't know that I can tell you off the top of my head. How many, how many feet is the handicapped parking from the door to the church? Um, um, we, every, there, are, there are regulations that guide all of this, and all of this will be in accord with regulations. So, And we will make it as handicapped friendly as we can. I, I don't know if we can tell you the exact number of feet at this point in time. If I 
you look at it, it's probably 50 or 60 feet from these spaces here. Um, the drop off point right here is really the access into gathering. Um, <coughs> Which are little pointer. Would you show me where you would think the funeral procession that would happen every so often would be past the church so they get the casket back in the casket or in the purse? So the question has to do about funerals and, and how the funeral procession would, would work. We've talked about um, the idea of the funeral procession and weddings um, that the hearse could pull up across this plaza in the front. It's not a drive on a daily basis, but for something like that, that, that could be opened up and could be parked here. On a rainy day, I would envision it being under the drop off, um, off to the side here. Yes. The question of will there be steps going to the church, the answer is no, there will be no steps going into the church. Speaking of ceremonies, we never have a place where brides can get dressed and just come into church. I mean, we've never had a mirror or anything downstairs to rest. Well, Would one of these rooms work for it so the bride and her bride could get dressed and be right in the church? Well, is a question, um, will there be a room here where a bride can get dressed and, and be right there adjacent to the church? And the answer is yes. Yeah, the, there's two potential. One, one is this hospitality room could be used for brides um, or funeral families, those kinds of things right here. That was kind of the idea. Or um, when you get back here, any of these meeting rooms back here could also be if we want to be farther away from the you know, from the main gathering space. That makes sense. Well, the thing is, that that's phase two. We're talking about, I think she might be talking about phase one. What about phase one? What's going to be doing there? How are we going to do that? So will there be a place where the bride can dress in yeah. phase one? Hopefully there will be. Um, ultimately, phase one, what, it, it's, it's, it's all going to come down to how much money we can raise as to how much of this we can do. So we're going to do as much of this in phase one as we can. And if we have to make decisions, you know, likely a, a, a bride's room is probably going to be a lower priority um, than other things, but, we'll, but, but it is built into the plan to, to have something like that. Yeah. In phase one, there is a meeting room in this corner that I think would be used for a lot of those functions. Yeah. Uh, again, it all comes down to the amount of money we have and, and what we can do. But, you know, this is phase one is pretty narrow in scope um, again to get you out there on the site so but there is a, a space like that as well as there's a couple offices here that may or may not be offices they may be again some other type of uh, meeting room space something like that i think a point to make again as a reminder this phase one will be four and a half times bigger than what we have here so i think we'll have some flexibility it, it may not be the permanent bride room that we'll have after phase two but i think we'll have I know we'll have the flexibility to do many things there that we have been unable to do or that we have been very awkwardly able to do here. Yes, in the back. Um, the will there be a crying room for the little ones? There, there is not a cry room per se like this. Um, the thought is that um, on a uh, to take someone out of, or take a child out of worship would be into the gathering space and there would be a lot of glass between the two. Now there is a nursery space in the master plan. If we look at uh, in the master plan, there is a nursery space right here, just outside the worship down the hall a little bit. So that's, uh, again, a nursery space versus just a cry room. We would envision just um, going out into the gathering, into the gathering space.
Uh, will mass numbers be reduced? Well, I, I think they'll certainly be reduced. Uh, are you asking when? Or? <laughs> I think that that would be the, that would be the case. Yeah, I, and I think that's the plan. And I, I don't know how long Father Dorman and Father Shine plan to keep working. I know they're going to work as long as they possibly can. Uh, but. The <laughs> How much money do we have to have to start this? I'm going to ask Paul maybe if he can address that question because he's had those conversations. All right, for us to uh, basically begin the project, basically shoveling ground, we have to have 50% cash in hand and 50% in pledges. So depending on how the campaign goes is going to be contingent on when the project actually starts. But that's the criteria that the uh, Archdiocese lays out for us to begin the project. Yes? If you were to put that gathering space behind it, if you were to put that gathering space on at the same time, do you have a rough idea what that would cost to add? If you would, um, you mean the, the phase two gathering space, Mike? Okay, what, what was the question again? Um, yeah. But the question is, if we would add this phase two gathering space onto the phase one worship space, what would that cost? If we have a rough idea, my guess would be in the range of probably two million additional. So, I don't know if you heard that, but Kevin said approximately two million additional to do that. Depending on if you did, the, you know, the chapel. The, hospitality room, some of those other things, the bell tower that are kind of outlined in that phase. Yes? Where is the organ and the choir going to be at? The organ and the choir, where would they be here? The organ, the organ console and the, and the music, we've talked about them being off to, towards the front but off to the side, so in that kind of area. Again, not, not designed yet, so you know, it's a placeholder at the moment. Other questions? Yes? We be able to make a separate contribution to the Archdiocese capital campaign and then a donation or a contribution for just the building of our church to our financial campaign here. Does it all have to go to the archdiocese and then come back to us? I think you're really kind of talking about the accounting of this. Um, can you, well, uh, are you talking about whether you can designate your? If, I'm only, if we're only going to get a portion, if I can, whatever I contribute to the capital campaign for the archdiocese, we're only going to get a, a portion of that contribution. Is that Twenty, twenty. Well, twenty percent directly. Now we're going to get the benefits that Father laid out about the school, um, the tuition assistance for our school families. Um, we're going to get the the benefit. It's indirect, but certainly the benefit for our retired priests to be able to support them. Right. So, yeah. But if I want to make a contribution to that and have a portion of that come back, but still have the bigger portion of my contribution go directly to the parish for the building of our church, can I do that? I don't think we have all the final answers on that yet. The question is... Uh, I think the confusion is if there's two separate campaigns or just one campaign. There's two separate campaigns, so you can donate what you want, but the parish in general has to meet that one goal. But, so you could say, I want to give a thousand to the diocesan campaign and five thousand or a million. <laughs> Do that. In the end, we just have to make sure we paid off our amount. So the difference, in one sense, you could say, well, is there any difference? And I think there is in the sense that um, people are giving, and people are giving, saying, if the diocese would be saying, well, you give and we'll give you what you need, that's not what's going to happen. It will be two separate things, though it goes through the same clearinghouse, but it's two separate sets of books with that. 
but um, a person could say, this is what I'm giving to the church, and it could be much greater or smaller, hopefully not, than what I would give to the Archbishop's Fund, or the, um, the One Faith, One Hope, Capital Campaign, whatever you call it. Yeah. Does that explain that? What's not clear to me, if we go over that amount with the reduced, because we've asked for a reduced amount, will we get 60%? I have to ask for a clar clarification on that. We don't. Do, you, do you have a clarification on Okay. I'm not clear on that. Only for the um, combined campaign. Yeah. I think in general, we understand that the, the, the questions about the Archdiocesan campaign, that you have some. Um, we still do, too, because all of those um, all those questions haven't been answered for us. And we've been working um, very diligently with the Archdiocese, and I think that they've been trying to address the questions for us as quickly as they can. Just all those final decisions have not been made. Um, one of the big ones that we were very glad to hear is that, that they were going to waive that assessment. We thought that that was a very significant thing. Um, but some of these other um, these, these other type questions still have to be ironed out as we move along. So hopefully you'll bear with us on that. And, and we're continuing to pursue this. In fact, we have, a, we have a meeting this coming week with the Archdiocese to discuss more of these issues. <coughs> yes? Um, in the first portion of the building, is there room for restrooms? And also, if you're going to use the gathering space as a baby room, what do we call that? I'm sorry. As a cry room. Um, thank you. Um, is there going to be a little bit of seating in the gathering space? And is there going to be speakers in the gathering space so the parents can actually attend mass? Uh, that's kind of a multi-part question. One had to do with will there be restroom facilities? And I can absolutely assure you there will be restroom facilities. In phase one. In phase one, yes. <laughs> um, and, and then I think the question had to do with if, if folks are utilizing that gathering space for um, cry room purposes, will there be speakers or chairs so that they can hear what's going on and see what's going on? Yes. And, and the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's these stained glass windows. The, the plan is to take these stained glass windows and to move them uh, to the new church. That'll be one of the ways we're going to be connecting our past with our future. Um, I think the bell, the bell and the bell tower also we plan to move that. Um, and as, as, as many of those kinds of things as we can. Um, Ken, did you have a question? Yeah, where's the rectory? Where's the rectory? <laughs> that was the service building. <laughs> We're really looking at, uh, by the time that we would be to the point of moving, just buying a house, probably on either Carolina or New Haven. Um, to build a rectory today, it's, it's, a house is, is fine because you don't have meetings and things. You're not supposed to be having meetings and things in the place where the priest lives. Mm -hmm. Yes, back. <laughs> I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Once this project is complete, what happens to the existing site? When this project is complete, what happens to the, to the existing site? Um, I don't think we can answer that definitively, but certainly when, uh, when it's totally completed, this, this site would be put on the marketplace, and um, you know, we, we, we would try to find a buyer for it. Um, there's been some indication that maybe the city of Harrison's interested in it, but we, you know, we certainly don't know that. That's going to be a number of years down the road, because realistically, the school's going to be, probably be here at, at, at a minimum for uh, quite some time. So we'll probably have to cross that bridge as we come, but all the way would be to sell this property. Yeah, we'll use the, that we, uh, the purchase price of the, whoever buys this property, put that towards the new church then? Uh, 
Um, question has to do with the funds that we would acquire for this property. Can we put it toward the new church? Um, my understanding is we're entitled to those funds. The funds would be ours, but we have to pay for the church with cash up front. So we wouldn't be out of here because the school is still here. So we wouldn't have money at the time the church is built That's to say we're going to use it. It would become our money once we're done. That, that, that's the problem. Well, going into the that, might, that might assist us in some final phases of some you know, final land development and th things of that nature. But it's just really difficult to forecast that right at this point in time, actually how that would flow out. Yes? Um, the, well, the, the amounts the amounts are here. Um, this will all be on the parish website. So the the, the point was is the, the numbers that we had up here, the dollar amounts are not in the handout, um, but they will be. This is being videotaped. This will be on our website, and the PowerPoint will be on our website. So the information will be available to you if you want to refer to it. Yes. Set up to accommodate laying out funerals. Are you I don't know what this is called. Visitation. Yeah. Visitation. Yeah. Yes. But will the gathering space be set up to accommodate um, visitations for funerals? And that's yes. That's one of the one of the purposes we have in mind for the gathering space. That it could accommodate um, funerals. In phase one and in phase two. Yes. Yes. Yes, Mary. Then is it possible to break down phase two and put the bell tower in for the parish offices and everything else? I'm sorry. Would you, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Oh, I'm sorry. If we would exceed the money for phase one, hopefully if we would exceed that amount, could you break down phase two depending on how much money was exceeded by and maybe put the bell tower on first and then do the, the rest of it? Yeah, the question is if we would exceed in, in phase one, in the, our fundraising exceeds the phase one amount, could we then add the bell tower or, or other things? And yes, we certainly can. I think at that point in time, we'd have to look at how much money do we have and then lay out pros and cons of, of, of what comes next. So I don't think we could say definitively it would be the bell tower, but it could be. Okay. You're welcome. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yes, Mike. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Does the, does, the official, does the initial site plan include the street widening? Yeah, we would, we would anticipate that something's going to have to be done on Carolina Trace, uh, even in the phase one. Uh, out here, more than likely a, like a passing blister or a pull off, yeah. So yeah, any, anything we build out here, we'll have to do something out yeah. on the street, yeah. Uh, Russ? Oh, dead end street at the back end of the property. Is that considered as a possible exit entry point? Uh, the question is the dead end street at the back of the property. You might want to show that, Kevin. I think that's what goes into Hickory, um, Hickory Flats. Was that considered as a, uh, the answer is yes. Um, that there's, there's, right now there's three possible uh, egresses from the property. That's one of them. Uh, there's one on New Haven Road and one on Carolina Trace. So. On West Road, we we don't go to West Road. Yeah. I mean, that's all they have. And that's what you got. I see that as a problem. 
Uh, yeah, okay, uh, the, 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 the comment is that I, I think in, in some, uh, having mobile exits is going to be necessary, and even two and three might be, uh, you know, might be some problem in terms of time. And um, I think we recognize that. Um, we have to work with what we have. Um, th there's, some, there's been some discussion that, um, particularly in this primary one, there'd be a left-hand lane and a right-hand lane. We would try to do some things to make that as efficient as possible, but, um, but in the end, we, we do have to work with the limitations that we have. But yeah, it's a good observation. And also, it's a great distance in that parking lot to the back end of the athletic fields, too. That's more than one. Well, there would be some, there is some parking where, uh, that's going to be the bus parking in the school day, but that would probably be for athletic events. Uh, that would probably be set up so the parking could, uh, could take place there. Uh, that's one of the things that I think Entheos has done a very good job in terms of a lot of flexibility um, for, the, for those kind of issues. Uh, I'm going to get some areas and ask a question, yes. Does the property have to be rezoned, and how long will that take? No. The, uh, the the property you're you're hearing the, the property does not have to be rezoned. Wait. This is this is a residential district, and you're allowed to put a church in a residential district. Uh, it, it, it would come with an S overlay, which is special, but uh, it does not have to be rezoned. And also on uh, the entrance to, to where this is, uh, Carolina Place, is that where all the concrete is now? Where there's already an entrance. Are you you trying to identify exactly where the entrance is? Where the entrance um, is. There, when, when the uh, city repaved West Road, there is a concrete entry there, and there's uh, or West. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> when they uh, repaved and, and re uh, organized that, they did leave a, an entry there right. for us. Is that and that's, there? that's between the, there's 40 foot of space between two houses there. That, uh, that does hold up. That, that axis is right on this yeah. edge of this area. Just so you have a realize where that is, yeah. Uh, somebody who hasn't asked a question. Yeah. Is that the only way to get to the parish hall? It's like if you want to go through the office entry and get to the parish hall. Um, you're talking about in, in the phase two, the, the way to get to the parish hall? It, is the office entry the only way to get there? That, there? Yeah, that would be the main entry there. I mean, it could, there could be a direct entry. Um, but it, to me, it does make a lot of sense there when you already have an entry here. Now, there is a secondary, I'll say back here, uh, that we set up if you wanted to make, if there were like a caterer or something like that, or folks working in the kitchen maybe, that that access could be from, I'll say, the back side of that, so. Some hands over here. Dale? Is that in the township or the city? It's in the city. It's zoned, yes, I'm correct in saying that, right? Yeah, it is in the city of Harrison, not in the township. Yes. Okay. And will the sanctuary be situated so that it is well air conditioned and well heated for the priests? Father Campbell, will the sanctuary be well air conditioned and well heated? For I see that we're, we're losing a lot of our folks, which is fine. Hopefully everybody's questions were answered. We're happy to stick around and answer any other questions, but maybe at this point in time, it might be good to put a closure. Oh, yes. Yeah. For anybody, yeah, we've got these boards up here. These are some artist renderings of, of what we're looking So You can all come up here and get a closer look at these, what you've seen on the uh, PowerPoint. Um, but before we, before we do that, let's first of all thank you all for attending today. Um, 
I hope you, I hope you like what you saw. Um, thank you for your input, for your questions, for your support. Most importantly, we need to continue to put this to prayer. Prayer is the most important asset that we have. And I know that many of you have come up to me personally and said you're praying for this process, and I know, I know that you all are. Um, so continue to do that, and, and as we've said all along, if each of us does the best we can do individually, um, that's all we can ask. And then we'll leave it in the hands of the Holy Spirit from there. And, uh, and we'll see where the Holy Spirit takes us. But um, it's kind of exciting to see how far down the road we've gone, and uh, hopefully now some of this is starting to, um, y you've got a better vision as to where we're at, and, and it's, um, it's something that you can get enthused about and share it with your, your, your neighbors and friends who couldn't be here today. And certainly encourage them to go to our website, um, contact members of the committee if you have questions, and um, we'll continue to um, provide these opportunities as we go along to keep you apprised of our progress. And I'm gonna ask Father Jeff to close the meeting in prayer for us. I am grateful to the whole committee, um, especially to Tom for his leadership in this. This takes so much work. Also to Paul Well, who could make this his full-time job, but um, also has bills to pay and all those other things to take care of. So the, to the committee, to Paul, to Tom, and to Kevin, of course, uh, much gratitude for all that you've done. Let's close with the glory be. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks,